Forward.com presents CEOmanship, becoming a leader in today's business world with your host, Steve Gordon, CEO of Gordon Partnership Group, an international business consulting firm specializing in CEO boot camp, sales team training, as well as client growth and retention. Visit GordonPartnershipGroup.com. Gordon Partnership Group, your success is our business. And now, here's your host, Steve Gordon. George, Steve. George, George, how are you, buddy? Great. How you doing? Uh, Jumping on it. Never been better. Good really? day, never, never? Florida, and good day to those listening all over the world on our live uh, internet stream. Uh, this is Steve Gordon. You're listening to CEO Manship on SoFlo Radio and SoFloTelevision.com. And to my left, and for those of you watching on the live video feed, your right, uh, my friend, my producer. That's right. I'm the one mixing and scratching over here. The guy with itchy Mixing something, drinks and scratching, scratching. Something. Uh, I know. George Rodriguez. What are you thinking? Thank you. Another Monday. Another Monday. So, here we are. And uh, this time, unlike last Monday where it was uh, brutally rainy. It was rainy. It's uh, the, the, the time of yeah, the season. Well, you know. uh, yeah, but it's beautiful again today. So, so uh, here we go. <coughs> It's and because the cold front's coming in from up north. No, it's because Lori was away last week, so it rained. Ain't and no then sunshine when she's gone. gone. I hear you. <laughs> I feel your pain. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Wrong show. Anyway, uh, thank you all for, for uh, tuning in today. We have a great show today, and uh, I want to thank all of you. You guys, so many letters, so many uh, tweets and, and, and inboxes, uh, really great information, great questions. Don't forget... Uh, for those of you listening live, not on the archive, the uh, call-in number is 954-990-0036, 954-990-0036, if you have a question. I'm not going to panic because I watched the uh, computer just go blank again. That happened last week, too. No, it's not going blank. I'm just doing stuff. Oh, well, you're not supposed to be doing stuff. You're supposed to be paying attention oh, to it's me. Sh- it's show-related stuff. Okay. So, um, today's show is brought to us by a survey. And Survey is an unbelievable app for your uh, Android, for your iPhone. Uh, imagine just pushing a button and having someone take care of all your needs, George. Well, just about all your needs. Um, yeah, like my ex-wife when she was married to me. She, could she, push your she button. had that. Yeah, she did not she, take that's care all she of did all day long. She, no, no, I, I did. I did that. She just pushed buttons. Oh, she pushed your buttons. She yeah, and, and I did that. You know, I was her personal Survey. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Today's show is brought to you by George Rodriguez. <laughs> anyway, so um, so Survey will be available in the next couple of weeks in the uh, App Store and Google Play. But um, if you're a listener, or I should say as a listener, because you wouldn't know if you were a listener, as a listener to, to, to this show, CEO Manship, if you go to Survey, S-I-R-V-I dot com, and click the Contact Us button, and fill out some information, we will be sure to get you a preliminary version, a beta, or I shouldn't say beta, but a live version, uh, before anybody else. Because we appreciate you, and we value your input, and we want to hear how you're using Survey. Uh, don't forget, push a button, have access to your personal concierge, who will take care of just about every need you can, from reservations to gifts to flowers to doctor's appointments, uh, you name it. You know what? Better than that, why don't you use it in the beta or the early version, and you tell us how you're using it, and we will share those stories on the air. So, today's show, we're going to talk a little bit about launching a mobile app, because a lot of people said, wow, you know, you've been talking about mobile apps a lot, and um, we are excited. Some people said, I have an idea for an app. How do you do it? How do you launch an app? What's the best thing to do? And I'm going yes. to skip the programming part, and I'm going to talk about that. But before we do... I just I want you to tell me how to do that. I am. The app thing. Uh, it well, tasks You'll me. have to listen to the show um, today, George. Um, all right. I'll be here for it. <laughs> oh, good. Will you be here in person or in spirit, body, or mind? I'm going to listen to the... Um, you know, I'm going to watch the video later. Uh, that's on good. On CEOmanship.com. I got, uh, I, I've subscribed. Oh, you did. CEOmanship.com. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And uh, so, George, uh, before we talk about the tips for launching a mobile app today... Uh, how are you doing? I know that you had um, a couple doing of employees, great. an old employee, a new employee. And it's kind of new to you. When I started the show with you, uh, you didn't have new. A, you were chief cook and bottle washer, <clears throat> and so that's good. I mean, I've had uh, employees come and go in the past, but uh, you know, now now I I have them all the time, <laughs> which is uh, you know because we've grown and we're growing. So yeah, I wanted to share an employee story because I don't infer what you will because you you know you're the uh, the coach, you're the consultant. 
And I don't know what kind of a lesson you can take from this, uh, but it happened just this morning. All right. That, oh, um, it's a fresh story. I had to chew out an employee that uh, up until now had been a very good employee, very quick to learn and firing on all cylinders. And I was very disappointed because the um, the events that occurred, and it was several in a row, the events that occurred uh, really just came down to not caring. They wouldn't have happened if this person had just cared enough to, to do the right thing or, or even you know, let someone know, like me, perhaps, and, okay. and, so and where, these crises would going? have been avoided. What, but what then happened? the other employee, I, yeah, I don't okay. want to go into details because right. it's really not, not rele- relevant because all of the business people that are listening to your show, I'm sure, have have situations. Your I'm, I'm just a cell horrible. Phone just go off. The, my tea, it was my tea is... Uh, can, can I just tell you before, and I'll yeah. interrupt you, <laughs> I'm not even going to ask if I can tell you. You know, last week your phone went off, it's but I forgave you because it was my wife. guy. <laughs> um, mm-hmm. And now... Don't people know that the CEO manship is live now when they text you? Not, not everyone. Then you should take time right now and text that person back and I say, hey, listen, I'm in the middle of a show. Why aren't tune, you listening? Tune in now. That's right. right. That's a very good point. All right. So you were saying <laughs> about your, your... So, but I mean, you know, anyone who's ever had employees has to... Because that's... It's happened before. This is not a new thing. The the someone... Something happening because someone didn't care. You know they have the ability. It was just I think a simple that's matter. Worst. It was just a simple matter. I really do. I think that when somebody... Um, is really trying and maybe doesn't yeah. quite have the skill set yet. Um, that's very, very different than somebody who is just, you know, sliding by, just couldn't. Crises. It. it was, you know, crises that could have been averted just, just by communicating with someone and and or following instructions. Just all of those things, and they they just didn't care to. I mean, that's the bottom line. So it was very disappointing. On the other hand, an employee that uh, that's been an employee for a while that uh, has been uh, up until recently. A lot of problems, and I regretted hiring this person on more than one occasion. But did, now, did that person know? We've, this story? we've had or, some or conversations. Were they find out we had show? had some conversations, you know. So this person, I mean, speaking of having to choose something out or set something right, we've had several conversations already, and and they didn't have to do those conversations. weren't about caring; they were about learning. Like, how long is it going to take you to learn how to do this? This, right. you know, but. They cared, so instead of telling them to go away, I just kept working with them. Because, and and this is what I thought at the time: I can handle an aptitude problem. I can't handle an attitude problem. Because if you don't have the right attitude, I really can't work with you. But if you do have the right attitude, I will work with you as long as it takes for you to get it. Well, now do they not only get it and are doing everything that they're supposed to be doing, but they're actually paying off uh, and and making money for me and booking shows and growing my business. Uh, and I feel, I guess, good that I didn't give up on them. Right. And so, I, you know, you tell me what the moral of the story is, because I, I mean, this close, this close to, uh, you know, cutting this person loose on, on more than one occasion. I, I think the first thing is that it, it's really important to essentially go with your gut, right? <clears throat> um, you know, they call it instinct for a reason. Yeah, you probably shouldn't tell me to do that. Yeah, my gut is stupid. No, 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 <laughs> it's not. It's not, because, it, yeah. you know... It, it, one of the things that I, I've recognized just listening to this story is is that you you knew that this person needed help, but but you knew they were trying, and you know there are times when you, you know, With, without a doubt, by the way, they really cared and they were very contrite when when they when they failed. You know they're you know, and I just I didn't have the heart because they really appreciated the the help that they were getting. Well, you know, here's the here's the tough person to me i mean part of me would say well, look if you know it depends how long you have and are are you losing money because of that person um, there, there were occasions yeah okay so you know you you made a tough call you made a judgment call but it, it turns out that it worked out it doesn't always work that way um on the other hand attitude i have no patience for if somebody is like all right yeah man i'll get to it when i get to it here's my feeling you're out because you're well, not doing you, me a what favor. can you do with that I mean, that's, I mean, yeah. Right. Because you're not doing me a favor. I hired you. I'm the one writing the check. All right. I'm giving the job. This is your job description. Don't make it like it's so much effort because you know what? There's a hundred people out there who would love your job. Yeah. Yeah. I'm brutal, yeah. right? Yeah. Well, I always felt that I wasn't brutal enough. Well, you, you know what? The, the thing is, you're very nice, George. And you sometimes, as we, if people were. Although who, I have cut people loose because of the uh, attitude problem before. Well, this is what I was going to say. If for our new listeners, if you go to ceomanship.com 
all the way back in the archives. I mean, like, yeah, to, like to show, number, show one. number one. Yeah. And one of the conversations right. we had at the beginning was that you said, you know, you had a challenge with things like letting people go and, and, and all that. Yeah. So, no, you, you know, you, it, it's been a while. It, you have to make a decision now. Do you want to keep this other person or not? Well, there, there was a conversation. So this, I'm at the, uh, now I have to see if the conversation actually worked. Did you put deadlines? It's cold. No. All right, no, see, I, this is what I would do. I, I, I mean, the deadline of, like, never again. Like, let's not do this ever. This, I, I don't want these things again, to happen ever I, again. I would say, here's your job description, and I need these things done. It's, just, you know, it's not like a project that, that, that we're talking about. It's just certain things that, that procedure that wasn't followed, I expect it to be followed henceforth. So, you know, occasions have to arise to make sure that the so, procedure is followed. So here's my last bit of advice on this one. All right. I am a firm believer that you have to say what you mean and mean what you say. So if you tell this man or woman, uh, never again, mm -hmm. and then it happens again yeah. with an excuse, you have to be prepared. Well, it's just the same as with your children. That's the, the only excuse, and this was the conversation, the only excuse is just you don't care. Because it wasn't like, it wasn't right. like an asteroid came through the window or nothing, you know, with like... with. They're, they're really only boils so, down to that one thing. So that so yeah, absolutely. Right. I, so I, it, I agree it, with you. I, I would say it's just like your kids. You know, don't threaten to punish them uh, or 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 beat or, them. No, don't say beat them. Not on my show. <laughs> uh, but but don't threaten to punish don't. or take a phone away or do something like that, and then um, relinquish because you feel oh, bad. No. Because that all you have to do is once, and they win because they realize sure. that you are not a person of yeah, your word. That is like your kids, yeah. So yeah, well, you know. Anyway. Oh. Um, so I hope this works out. Let's, Thank let's uh, track back Stay on tuned. this or backtrack on this next uh, next Monday. Sure. You want to guess how many apps as of July 2015, so we're talking just a couple of months ago, how many apps do you think there are? Don't Google it, George. I I'm see not. you grabbing the mouse. You are so bad. <laughs> <laughs> You're like a kid. Um, how many apps do you think there are? I'm not Googling just, it. Just between the App Store and the Google Play Store. Between just app, like, app and I mean, like, um, you're talking about uh, Android and iPhone, or yes. both of them, yes. Just a, a guess how many apps are out there, Lordy, more than a million, yes. I don't know, two million. Uh, want to keep going, okay? Five, no, okay. So, no, so right no. now, as of July 2015, there are about 1.5 million apps in the App Store, which is Apple, okay, okay. And then there are about 1.6 million apps in the Google Play, which is the Android uh, okay. store, right? So you're talking about over 3 to 3.1 million apps that are out there today. And it's no wonder sure. when you create an app why it is so difficult to, to be seen, to get recognized, uh, to, to actually be downloaded. You know, here's, I'm going to share with you some numbers later on, but the sad reality is the majority of apps never make any money. In fact, most of them lose money. Um, and, and those that do make money make so little that the cost of the app upgrading, keeping programmers isn't really worth it right. anyway, which Part is not, the, by right. the way, to, to discourage you because I'm going to give you the tips on what the winners in the app world are Good, doing. Good, because I don't want to be discouraged. But I, I, I've already run into some discouraging things. That's why I asked at the beginning of the show. Were you trying to put an app together very for uh, Soflow Radio? Well, yeah, absolutely. And, and as a matter of fact, we'd already done a... Um, a considerable amount of work towards that with the artwork uh, and everything like that. But to have the app that I wanted, I told you before the show, uh, would have been very expensive, and and making that money back would would have been very unlikely, as you said. Well, you have to determine what it is you want out of your app. So, for example, one of the dirty little secrets is some of the the bigger names in in the app world, um, corporations like a McDonald's or. Uh, Target or any any huge company. I'm just pulling a few out of the hat, right? Um, they're not necessarily interested. I mean, they'd like to make money, but the purpose of their app might be more brand recognition, um, just staying in contact with their customers, et cetera, et cetera. It may not be for immediate uh, purchasing because the reality is you can't buy a McDonald's hamburger through an app, um, but you could use it for other things. Um, and, you know, more than likely it'd be easier to go to, say, Target, the example I just used, by going to their website because it's much easier to look through the, whatever it is you want to purchase than, than on, on your iPhone, especially if you don't have the ginormo one like my wife does um, that 
I, I covet those. I envy that. Oh, no, no, no. no. You, have, you have iPhone envy? Well, I mean, I have an iPhone 4, but it's because it's big. It's got the 64 gigs, and it does everything I want. But when it should fall into the water... It'll um, be much more expensive you know, to replace. Yeah, then I'm going to get the big one, man. I see those people with those big old platters. I want one. All right, so I want to give you some strategies to uh, to help your your drive for a successful app launch... Um, and help it become better from the very, very beginning. All right, so the first thing that I would say is that as you are creating your app, as you're coming up with this brainchild, um, I will tell you that outside of the game world, all right, so let's take games out, you want to build a product that solves a problem, all right? Really amazing apps solve glaring problems. And, and if you think about some of them, right, George, that you realize, wow, like that person was really brilliant. Or now we just take them for granted. Mm -hmm. So here's a couple, right? So you don't want to wait on the, uh, the corner for a taxi anymore because it's snowing in New York or it's rainy or hot in Florida. Uh, so what do you do? Uh, you, you could use the Uber. Uber, right? You just said it. Or Lyft um, mm -hmm. and, and push the button and the car comes to you, right? Great apps that solved a problem, right? Here's another one. Maybe you're 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 interested in learning a language, right? You you drive back and forth. Uh, I'm in my car a lot, whether it's you know coming here or back and forth between where I live in Jupiter, Florida, and say sometimes Fort Lauderdale, Florida. Um, you know that's could be with traffic. It could be as much as three hours a day round trip. So what if I wanted to learn a new language? How about um, an app like Duolingo? All right. So, and by the way, these are not um, sponsors. Sponsors yet, but you're welcome to. Um, but, but I'm trying to say these are, are 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 apps that have found a problem and then found a way to solve that problem. All right. We're gonna get back to um, Uber in a second. This is not gonna be a whole show of Uber. Just just one more thing. They did really really well. So so the second thing is. When you have your app, you you want to build a referral program into your app. You need to give people a reason to share your app with their friends. Because while at the end of the day, um, the bulk of, of app downloads do come from people searching, which is something we'll talk about later on in the show, um, there's nothing better than a good referral from, from a friend, right? So, so right. You, if you were to do the SoFlow Radio uh, and SoFlow Television app, you would want to build in a compelling reason for those people who are listeners to then share their experience with their friends. Right. right. Because that that's always, you know, a good referral is always the best. So um, one of the things you can do is to, to give your early users a real incentive uh, to refer their friends. So again, using Uber as an example, uh, one of the, th the things they did that was a really great job uh, is that they were offering $10 ride credits for those who referred friends. Excellent. And that exploded their business. Okay. So you would think, what, what could we do at, at SoFlow Radio um, to allow them uh, to, or encourage them? Maybe it would just be something like, you know, just listen to your favorite shows with your friends and then, you know, make comments together um, because you don't really have a, a, something you could give away. Sure. Or maybe you would have, um, I don't know, a contest that, that you could have people come into the studio and watch their favorite show live. We could. I mean, radio contests, you did lots, lots of things like that. You do have a long experience, long history with radio contests. Yeah. Done all kinds of contests. I don't want to hear about them because I'm sure they're crazy. Oh, no. I mean, from the ridiculous to the sublime, I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that could be a show in itself. Here's another thing. I believe that... that People want what they can't have, right? I mean, not always as a as a hundred percent rule, but for for the most part, if if there's something out there that that everyone's clamoring over, I mean, think think about it, right? Right now, we are mid two thirds of the way through September, right? Already on the news, I saw a story the other day where they're saying these are the toys that will be in highest demand this Christmas, this Hanukkah, this holiday season, right? These are the toys that will be yeah, the most difficult order to find. Order now. Right, so, hello. You know you probably should order right? now. Right, <laughs> so do you believe that these co these companies might have created this buzz to sell that product? Sure, they've, right. been, they've been at it a long time. <laughs> right, and they're really good at pushing the buttons to make sure that, that parents are scrounging around 
to find that product uh, and and make sure that it's wrapped nicely under the tree. And so um, it's all about creating scarcity. So one of the things that you can do with with your app is to build a, a waiting list. Uh, so, so a waiting list helps you to capture demand and to build an email list. And, and the way to do that, or one way to do that, uh, is that you can build a website, what's called a landing page. Now, landing page, for those of you who aren't familiar, is typically a website that's one page long. All right, And all it does is talk about what, whatever your product or service is or whatever you're selling, or it gives people a compelling reason to want to enter their name and email address, or if you need their phone number, that as well. All right, so... In this particular case, you might say, um, we would like to, you know, if you'll, we're, we're going to let, we're coming out in 60 days, but if you give us your name and, and email address, we'll email you 30 days in advance and we'll let you have this product and use it for free for 30 days. And all we want is your feedback, right? And right. if you know anybody else who, who um, would like this, you can tell them to put their <clears throat> name and number here. So you're building a momentum before. And by the way, that momentum is very important because when you finally launch your app, um, there's a whole bunch later on in the show, I'll talk about App Store analytics. Um, just like Google, for example, sure. uh, um, gives you analytics of your website, uh, the App Store uses these analytics to to know whether or not to place your app in the top 25 or 50 or 10 apps uh, in their store. And so one of the things that they do is they look at things like, you know, how many downloads. So if you get a surge of downloads and you can keep that going, then um, you have a good chance of, of staying in the top of the list and that's a good place to be. So here's another company. Uh, this company is called, or an app called Robinhood. Now, Robinhood is a, a zero commission stock trading app. Uh, and they did a great example of, of using a wait list effectively. Robinhood, um, in, in an article, the CEO of Robinhood stated that referrals accounted for over 50% of their million person wait list. Wow. That's a lot. That's well, I'm, a lot. I'm immediately interested. Yeah. Right. There you go. So what's interesting about that is obviously they, they put some money into marketing. You don't get a million person wait list or even a half a million. So how are they making their money with the 0%? I wish you hadn't asked me that question. Why? Um, <laughs> so no, we'll, um, we'll, we'll get back to you on that. I, I, my guess is they probably are charging you know a, a fee. Okay. You know, Maybe not a commission, but maybe a monthly fee or something to that effect. You've heard me use the word freemium. As compared to premium. Yes. So, so one of the things that you can do is to leverage um, a freemium model of your app. So you make your app available for free with what we call a freemium model. So what's a freemium? Um, now, it, it is possible you're going to get more downloads with a free version of your app. Um, and then you could also offer upsells or, or, or upgrades. So going back to Survey, right, which we, we talk about a lot lately. Um, and, and so... What Survey does, again, is they allow their users to join for free, download the app at no cost. And they can use it for as long as they want and never have to pay a penny. And when they get that app, they're going to get several things. They're going to have access to um, all different types of discounts uh, that have been already selected for them uh, or, or, or selected by uh, Survey. So, for example, they can save uh, when they're dining out <coughs> excuse me, on travel. Uh, legal issues. They can save on on um, deals of the day. Uh, we talked about the Survey MD, which is where if you need a medical doctor uh, and you can't get to the office because you know the doctor's office, but you have a sore throat, uh, they can they can look at that or earache or you know certain things, not a broken bone or, or something as serious as maybe cancer. But but for the majority of what are considered office visits, really don't require an office visit. So right. your doctor can come right no, to I you. I have a fever. Give me some. Um, there's a whole health and fitness tracking area and so much more. But on top of that, they offer access to the concierge where you can push the button and the concierge answers the phone. Uh, they're here in the United States. They speak to you. They answer your questions. Uh, how can we help you? And you give them your request. You know, it's um, my anniversary coming up. I really, I need several things. I need flowers. I need a reservation at this hotel. Um, I need this gift ordered. Uh, sent to this address because I don't want my wife to see it until I'm ready to give it to her and so on and so on and so forth, right? And so they could, would be able to take care of all those tasks and send you an email, a phone message, or a text to tell you it's done. Now, in the freemium model, okay, you get three contacts with the concierge per month and only during what the company considers to be off-peak hours. 
All right, so my understanding is that might be the hours of, say, 8 to 4, 8 a.m. to 4 p.m., 8 a.m. to 5 p.m., where they're figuring that the majority of requests will come in in the evening. Now, if you would like to have more than three conversations with a concierge, you have to upgrade. So what they're doing is they're saying, go ahead, use it. Really use it. Enjoy Mm -hmm. it. Make it work for you. Put us to the test. Let us really take care of your daily mundane tasks and make your life easier. Free up time. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Business Owner, we can give you more hours in your work week. Oh, Mr. and Mrs. Business Owner, we can give your best employees more hours in their work week. You know, would it be worth a dollar a day as a business owner to give your best 10 employees, your most productive 10, 20, 30, 50 employees access to somebody who could take care of their tasks? Uh, and, and they feel good as the employee that you did something for them, but you're going to be getting more productivity because that's going to save that employee hours uh, a week and, and therefore, you know, many, many hours a month and a year and then help them to make more money for themselves and their company. So, so they're banking on the fact that once you try it, you're going to fall so in love with the idea yeah, of you'll having get hooked. it's like room service on your cell phone, but they're not just bringing you food, right? I mean, it's like, hello, I need this, but they could bring me food. Uh, they, well, they could have somebody like the pizza right. place downstairs bring you yeah, food, yeah, yeah, right? Or you like the great so place that, across the street? I, I like them all, man. I know you have a cornucopia. We, of it's wonderful. Here. This food court right outside the, the but that it's not really a food court. It's actually a restaurant. I know, well. right? It's it's, it's a, but it's a two block stretch where it's most mostly restaurants. It is it not is, an accident that we chose this spot. <laughs> well, and it is an international mm-hmm. uh, buffet. So a little to say. zoning thing here to the side. Uh, no chains are allowed on this stretch These of are road all between held. Dixie to the Circle. That's right. Yeah. Yeah, and then of course you got the food truck circle. Or on every yeah, Monday. man, circle of wagons. Circle of wagons to get anything you want. So again, build that wait, li- wait list, uh, leverage your freemium model, um, and then one thing you can do that would also help is from time to time, or certainly during your early launch stage, you could offer your paid version for free for a limited amount of time. Okay. All right, and again, th- what, if you're going to do that, though, what I want you to do. Is I want you to promote it on on certain applica- certain certain um, publications and certain outlets. Here, here's a couple of names that you know for those of you who are thinking about doing this. Um, Life Hacker, Gizmodo, G I Z M O D O, Forbes Technology, and The Guardian are all great places to promote that you're giving away your product for free. Um, you can tweet it or email. What I would do is is email like the right person. Like go look those sites up. Find out who you know, maybe the publisher is, or somebody who writes uh, technology articles often, and then go maybe to um, LinkedIn and look them up, right? And um, send them an email or an inbox that says, you know, here's what we're doing, and here's a bio on what our product is, and here's a, you know some photographs of, of screenshots, and oh by the way, you know, we'd love to have you use it for free. And uh, that would, of course, give them more incentive to to want to go out there and, and talk about your product, especially if it really is as good as you think it is. All right, so um, we've talked about building a product that solves a problem, build a referral program, uh, build a wait list, get people excited, leverage your freemium model, make your paid version free for a limited time, um, write and promote articles about the problem that your app solves. All right, so... so you want to produce content that adds value to your potential customers. Don't just write, you know, spammy articles because nobody's going to read them. You know, it's very, we, you know, people are pretty sophisticated these days. They can read through what looks like an advertorial and what looks like a genuine attempt to solve a problem. By the way, I will tell you that I, on, on more than one occasion, I have seen people post online in LinkedIn and some of the other places that I just mentioned, and they'll say, Look, in full disclosure, I work with this company, but I want you to know that I believe in this product, and here's why. And it's not like buy this, buy this, buy this, buy this. It's like problem, problem solved. Next problem created, problem solved. This is how I did it. I worked, and they give you step by step. And then you go, okay, look, this guy was honest. He's like, yeah, all right, I I work for the company, but you know what? I'm trying to help you solve a problem, and I have a solution. And I like that. I like that honesty. Excellent. Um, I'm writing this down, by the way. That's good. So again, um, you can do these through articles, through blogs, through blog posts, um, eBooks, which is a whole story we could talk about at another time on another show. Uh, videos. I like webinars. 
Because ebooks you, like the one you wrote? Yes, uh, where they can go to ceoistic.com and download my, my most recent book. Uh, thank you for that uh, shameless plug. Um, and what this helps you, though, is to become uh, an expert in the industry. The more you solve problems without being spammy, the more people look to you for, for help. Um, you know, I, I go to certain YouTube channels all the time because I realize these people are trying to build their list and they're trying to promote a product from time to time. But they're really good at solving issues. I, I was telling you today uh, before the show that I needed to have, I said, George, I'm having a really hard time um, compressing the size right. of, of uh, a movie uh, file that right. I made in an iMovie. And um, I was asking you how, and I've been watching a couple of videos by this one person, uh, and, and he's been very, very helpful, um, but I just need to keep watching a few more because I didn't quite get it. Right, so did you make this with that really cool camera that you brought in that one? Too? No, I didn't. I just made this on my Mac. Okay. Um, all right. So one more for right now. There's a um, a website. It's called Quora, Q U O R A, Quora, but it's pronounced Quora. And people ask. It's like a question and answer type website. So so you could target questions to answer, which center around the pain point of your target audience. All right. And, and again, really great answers. Sometimes well, Cora will actually refer those uh, or contact you to, to see if you can get published um, as, as an expert. So you get oh. like a double whammy. Really? Really. To look that up. So when we come back, we are going to continue our talk about tips for launching a mobile app. So don't go away. This is Steve Gordon. You're listening to CEOmanship on SoFlo Television and SoFlo Radio. Com. More CEO manship with Steve Gordon next on SoFloRadio.com. Put a team of professional consultants behind your home or business computer with key information solutions, providing solutions to your internet and computing needs while keeping you on the cutting edge of technology, preventative maintenance and networking support, hardware and custom built computers. Let key information solutions be your personal tech staff for your home or office with affordable hourly, monthly, or annual rates to fit anyone's budget. Call key information solutions now, 954 970 733374 that's 954 973 or visit keyinformation.com Add a twist of yoga. Yoga, yoga twist, twist with, with Julie. Julie. A great way to integrate yoga, meditation, and lots of fun. Promote family bonding. Help with flexibility and exercise. Julie has been teaching kids for over eight years in after-school programs, summer camps, and local studios. Book a group, family, or one-on-one session now. Email me, yogatwistjulie at gmail.com. Follow Yoga Twist Julie on Instagram and like Yoga Twist on Facebook for great family lifestyle tips and Yoga Twist events. Here's the latest ratings you asked for. What is this? Where did all our listeners go? Um, SoFloRadio.com. SoFlo, what channel is that on? It's online, sir. It's Wi-Fi radio. Oh, I see. But what channel is it on? Put your business on the leading edge of media advertising with the SoFloRadio.com network. Unlike antiquated AM or FM radio, your professionally produced 30 or 60 second ad will be heard live on SoFloRadio.com during the day and will be downloaded thousands of times a day on SoFloRadio.com as well as being heard on our free podcasts on iTunes. Wi-Fi radio and Bluetooth are now available with BMW, Ford, GM cars and trucks. Don't get left behind. Contact SoFloRadio.com for details and our very affordable rates soflowradio.com stay ahead of the game now back to CEOmanship with Steve Gordon on soflowradio.com we're back yes we George. are do you feel like you're huffing glue right now? I, I really do. Uh, you know, normally we charge our hosts extra well, for such a bit. privilege, but uh, yeah, it's getting a little. Um, wow. They are laying carpet in the yeah. office next door. Woo! And we're all enjoying it. You know, if we pass out in the middle of the show, I don't know what they're putting out there, but it's like I'm getting dizzy. Don't strike a match. That's right, for sure. <laughs> so the question was raised earlier: How does Robinhood, the app that uh, doesn't charge? Uh, for commissions uh, for stock trades, make their money. And so during the break, I took a little time to do a little hey, research. And, and essentially, the way they make their money is uh, on interest. 
uh, on folks that choose to have things like margin accounts, et cetera. So yeah. like traditional brokerages. Brilliant. I'm moving. I'm, I'm going to drop a Meritrade. <laughs> there you go. There you go. All right. So we talked earlier about different ways to, to have a, a very productive launch of your app. And I have a lot to cover in a very short amount of time. So I'm going to start rolling through this. Here's yeah. another thing you can do. Let, let's face it. We are a world uh, where everything is electronically driven by tweets and texts and short little messages and blips. And, you know, if your video is more than, you know, a minute or two minutes long, it's like, I don't have the time yeah, to watch that. So, but, but think about how important face-to-face is in terms of generating a buzz. So I would suggest that you also attend or host uh, a local marketing events. Um, you can host your own event or you could use something like meetup.com, M-E-E-T-U-P.com, uh, to find existing groups where maybe you can promote your app uh, while being a speaker uh, for their, their, uh, their meetup group. There is always the paid acquisition route. So how do you do that? Well, you know, if your organic in-app growth isn't uh, where you want it to be, um, you can go paid routes like like Facebook will allow you to do paid paid advertising uh, or Twitter or Chartboost or Google or AdMob or that's A D M O B AdMob uh, amongst many others. Of course, why not reach out to the press? You know, the press is a great way to drive short-term awareness uh, and to generate downloads. You know, I would suggest, again, publications like TechCrunch, uh, VentureBeat, CNN, uh, Forbes, Fast Company, Entrepreneur, Business Insider, Inc. Uh, all of these have uh, both print and uh, digital uh, publications. And, and they're interested in, I mean, look, every show, here's the inside secret, right? Like radio shows, television shows, news shows, print uh, publications... Everybody needs content. Yep. And there are from time to time, there is always time when, when they're scrambling to find something to fill the pages, fill that extra, you know, a few minutes in an hour. Um, I have a friend of mine, he's been on this show, um, gets calls all the time from the different uh, uh, cable television um, news channels, CNN and Fox, uh, Gene Marks. Okay. Uh, and, and, you know, a lot of time it's because it's, uh, they're running out a very appropriate story. And other times, um, I have another friend that I knew back up in New York, and she would just get calls on a random basis. And I know that some of that time they're just looking to, for, to fill space. It wasn't that they were using her to fill space. She was an expert, and, you know, they needed somebody. And so um, reach out to the press. You never know when, uh, when that person is going to be running a, a story similar to what you're – your app, the problem it solves, and they're going to call you as an expert. Free press, lots of downloads. Um, again, go on to LinkedIn, search profiles by name, type in keywords like, um, you know, Forbes uh, or Inc. Magazine, uh, editor, things like that, and, and you'd be surprised what comes up. Um, you can find these people again, and then send them a brief note, just like I said earlier, why your app is a game changer, send them screenshots, make their life easier, send them access to the actual app, um, and if possible... Any um, what we call app metrics, which we're going to talk about hopefully in a few minutes, uh, that you have. Um, again, strategic partnerships. Seems silly, but why not? Like seems so basic. I shouldn't say silly. Okay. Right? So cross-promote where you have a mutually beneficial partnership. For example, um, maybe you have an app. Um, it, it's a workout app, right? I mean, you want to say something? No, I'm trying not to sneeze. Oh, that's good. I'm, I'm like, um, I'm on this, though. So you have a workout app, uh, but you're really targeting like like cyclists, all right, and and cycling enthusiasts. So why not partner up with either local bike shops across the country, uh, or even maybe bicycle manufacturers um, by offering those customers a special offer when they sign up for your app by using a promo code, whether it could be a discount coupon uh, at that store, whether it could be a discount for a bike, or maybe an upgrade or something like that. I love coupons, by the way. Like, there you go. Yeah, Groupon's one of my favorites. There's another app, right? Yeah. I'm just thinking of ones I use a lot. Like that. Okay, well, I, I, that's good. It's, that's handy, man. <laughs> no, it is good. I mean, think about how your phone has really changed your life in the sense that you don't have to clip that paper coupon anymore. Right. Oh, that. I mean, that was the, the thing that kept most people from using them. I mean, you get 20% off of a meal. Why not? I agree. I mean, cutting papers like grandma, you know? No, no, just there it is. <laughs> I agree with you. I mean, I, I, for those of you, again, who are new listeners, if you scroll back in our archives, we did a show on mobile marketing uh, early on uh, in, when we started this, uh, 
CEO Manship Show. Mm-hmm. And and again, you know, I love text message marketing. I love getting messages from from vendors that I have chosen to receive messages for, giving me updates and and coupons and incentives, etc. Yeah, no, it's a good thing. I get text messages alerting, alerting me to useful webinars every once in a while. There you go. Um, now, if you happen to have other apps already, then why not use your other app as a way to cross promote? Speaking of strategic partnerships, why not strategically partnership with yourself? Um, and so, if you have a couple of apps, uh, then then maybe have a little message pop up in the beginning or something, and just give an incentive to um, try your other app. How's that sound? Sounds great. I'm writing it down. Here's another thing. So so you want to experiment with how um, you ask your users for reviews. And I like to use what we call split testing or what's known sometimes as A-B testing. All that means is uh, that you A-B testing is a way to take different models of the same end goal and to, to see which one people react to. Okay. So you might ask for a referral early on. You might ask for a referral or a review in the middle. You might ask for a review. And you use this end. strategy with like different groups or in different or you just, cities. Right. Or well, you could do that too. Um, that's there you go. Uh, so in the app world, you know, reviews are critical. Remember, we said there's 3.1 million apps in, in, yeah. in the app store, right? So once somebody finally lands on a search where you actually come up in that search, you don't want to have like one star. Right, they use yeah. a star rating system in the app stores, and and so if you want to have five stars or as darn close to it as possible, and you want great reviews from your users, and so because that's what we call social proof. Okay, social proof is where other people are telling the world how great your product is, how they use it, uh, and that it's everything you say it is. And so a reader will look at that and they'll assume that if if other people like this app, I'm going to like it too. And I'm no different. I know that when I look at, at apps in the app store, uh, if I see something, you know, two or three choices of something that does sort of the same thing, if one of them has, you know, oh, this app crashes, this app, you know, doesn't work, yeah. it's really slow. That's all it takes, right? Right, that's it. <laughs> and, and so you got to really make sure that you're on your A game uh, when, you're, when you're doing your app and make sure you get good reviews and, and test the way that you get people to... Uh, respond because number one uh, the other thing is is you don't want to have no reviews right you don't want to go because i've I've also seen apps where there are just no reviews and i'm thinking well then nobody uses this app it may not be true right it could be the greatest app in the world but i mean as long if it's not like released yesterday it ought to have a few you would think so let's talk a little bit about how what i what i want to call app discovery all right so app discovery um is 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 basically making sure that your app is findable, right? That people can find your app in the app store. They can find your app um, when they're searching. And so there's something called ASO, ASO, and that's App Store Optimization. Just like you can optimize your website, there are ways to optimize your app in the app store, right? And it is not nearly as difficult as trying to figure out, at least not today, um, you know, because Google keeps changing their their algorithms, and they don't want anybody to know how they rank websites and stuff. But this is pretty basic, all right? So, one study showed over sixty percent of apps are discovered through an app store search. Okay, all right. So that's really important to know. Um, and while there are millions of apps available, the good news is um, there are ways to optimize your optimization strategies, which can get you a fair share of visibility, and that's what you want. I'm, I'm surprised it's not more because I, I was just, I just became aware of how few people actually connect their phone to the computer and do the syncing thing, and uh, you know aren't using their phone to its fullest potential. Their smartphone, I mean. So all of the apps that they download and everything is just right from the phone. They never. No, they never use the interface. Which no. is uh, wow. No. It's like man. You're no, not, not, I, I would tell you that it's a lot of almost zero percent of the time. In my case, when I'm really? when I'm listening or thinking about something, and I go to the app store. I, you know, if I don't know specifically what mm-hmm. an app is, I just type in you ty- a, what you want, what I want, what you're looking for. Right. That was great lead in, by the way, because we're going to talk about that portion of app discoverability in a minute. All right. So so. Um, ASO is actually the process of improving um, your visibility in the app store um, of your choice. So here are a couple of ideas. Number one, you want to pick, just like in, in, in a website, keywords are, are really, really important. So you want to pick relevant keywords. Because you remember a couple of things. 
You want people to first be able to find you when they search by that right word. Then you want to make sure that you have the right person because finding you and, and you know, if you find out you have the wrong search word and people aren't downloading you, then you got, you're got not doing your right job. Or worse, or just about as bad, they download and they just delete you because it's the wrong product. Okay, which yeah. I have done. Yeah, I've done that. Right? So um, you want to pick a keyword uh, and phrases which are relevant to your app, but also to your users. So you have to kind of figure out, A, how to word things so that people understand what your app is and then target it to the mindset of the searcher. So, for example, um, here's another one. If, you're, if you have an app that, that is um, – you're trying to provide, say, uh, local dog walkers uh, for, for dog walkers in ind- individual communities, right? Good right. idea, yeah. right? I got two dogs. Sometimes I'm not home. I need my dogs walked. What a great idea, right? So sure. Somebody send me a royalty on that one. All right, so if you use the keyword, say, dog, that's it's too broad, yeah. right? I mean, you know, you're going to get all these people. So you'd mm-hmm. be better off uh, using something like dog walker, right? right? Because... People typically don't search one words one word searches anymore. They search phrases. I mean, just this morning uh, sure. at breakfast, I was I was uh, talking to Lori about um, a project that I'm involved in, and I, and I was holding up a report, and I go, "Look at this! This report is it's unbelievable." I mean, I go, "You can find anything online now. All you gotta do is just type in exactly what you're looking for. Just I need yeah. to know blah 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 blah." You can be as verbose. You can misspell. You can use figures of speech. Google, like I'll sort it out. So, so there, there you go. So here's the other thing. You want to look at what's called keyword competitiveness and also traffic, right? So you want to look at the keywords you're competing with. Uh, and if there's way too much traffic, in other words, you type in dog and, you know, 9,000 apps choices come up, that's, you're going to get lost in the sauce, right? So try to aim for a new word and you can play around with that yourself. Um, there's also a, a website called Sensor Tower, S-E-N-S-O-R-T-O-W-E-R, SensorTower.com. And you can type in any app and see which keywords are driving traffic to their app. So you could look at your comp- competition. Okay. Yeah. It's just right? for apps? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, for apps. So you could look at your competition and try to figure out what's driving traffic and then maybe tweak that just a little bit. But you can see who's using what and then see how. Use that information so your competitor is using certain words. But when you type in those words, if 5,000 websites are coming up, uh, then you don't necessarily want to be in that, in that bucket. Right? You want to find something that's a little more unique. Um, also, just as an aside, if you have an international app, an app that can be used anywhere around the world, uh, it is easier to rank outside of the United States uh, in the app stores, than it would be to rank in in the American app stores. Um, so really, so if you can target some keywords uh, for for you know certain countries, maybe Germany or Denmark or whatever, right? So so it brings you up. Now that's huh. not going to help you if your product only works in the United States because American searchers aren't going to be you know right. Saying. But if you have a broadcasting app, let's say here's another thing: the keywords that you choose. Their placement is very, very important. There's an absolutely clear correlation uh, between between having a keyword in the name of your app and and the ranking for that keyword. Seventy four point three percent of all apps that rank number one for high traffic keywords have the target keyword in their app name. Yeah. Right. Makes yeah, sense. No, sure. Absolutely. Now here's another <laughs> thing we call keyword weighting. Not like W A I T, but the weight E-I-G-H-T. like heaviness. That's right, E I G H T. So the keywords included in the app titles, both iOS and Android apps, are are by far most heavily weighted in the algorithm. All right. So if you want to improve uh, the rank for a specific keyword, um, putting it in your title number one is your best bet. So for example, um, the more space that a word takes up in in the title, the higher that ranking will be. For example, if you have an app, in your case, let's say for a local uh, radio music. Okay. Okay. If you, if you look at the three words, local radio music, all of them are five letter or five character words. Mm-hmm. So if you wanted to rank highest for the word music, then I would eliminate local and radio um, from, from the name. Okay. Okay. 
because then that puts the weight highest on, on the most dense word, which would be the five character word radio or, or music, it. whichever I said, music, I think I said. Mm-hmm. Before I was talking to you about using sentences and, and more than one word to search for anything, whether it's uh, on the internet as a website or also as, as a, an app. Um, so you want to make sure you target multi-word or what they sometimes call um, long tail, long tail keywords. And so if you're having a hard time ranking in the searches, consider these multi-word searches when you're creating your, your okay. titles, et cetera, and your subjects, uh, because these can get much higher rankings, um, even though there might be less searches for that specific uh, set of words. Mm-hmm. But if, if that specific set of words would essentially drive a download every single time, because it's exactly what your product offers, well, that's so, a home run. Write it in there. Write it in there. There you go. What a good idea. Um, Here's the other crazy thing. You know, an image is so important, right? So so you want to have a really eye-catching icon. It, it, you know, the icon sometimes has nothing to do with the actual product, but if it looks really good and people see it in the app store, they assume your product is good. I've seen some really, really bad icons, and I've made the same judgment in, in, without even realizing it until I started to write the, my notes for today's show. Uh, and I started to think, well, you know what, I, I do that. And, and yet, I've also seen some apps that have great icons. Um, so again, going back to your split testing, your A-B testing, um, what I might do is go back and, and spend a few dollars uh, in areas like um, Twitter or Facebook or AdMob or Google AdWords uh, and test different icon images in those advertisements. So like, you know, Facebook has little ads on the side and sometimes you've seen an app advertised maybe when you're scrolling through Facebook. And, and so you can run separate advertisements and see which gets the most click-throughs and or click-throughs and downloads really is what's important. Yeah. 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 Once you have people using your, your app, the next thing is to understand behavior because there's, there's, there's sort of many steps to this process. Number one is that once it's written, you want people to be aware of it. Once they're aware of it, you want them to search for it. Once they search for it, you want them to download it. Once they download it, you want them to use it. And once they use it, you want them to be considered premium, like, like good users. Mm-hmm. Ironically, a, a high-quality user in, in some circles is somebody who uses your app even, say, three or more times. Like at all, yeah, or, yeah. That, that's a high quality. People are very fickle. Now, I'm not. I mean, I've got apps on my phone that I use all the time, like every single day. Which right? ones? Can you share? Um, yeah, I mean, I, I basic ones like like Survey, okay, or, um, LinkedIn, or sometimes Facebook, but not as often. I'm just looking on my. Um, I downloaded a very cool, very cool app um, a couple of weeks ago um, called Musi M U S I. Okay. So what this lets you do um, is is you can go and you type in a song, either an artist or a song itself, right? And this app goes out to YouTube, and it then provides a link to the this, the music that you're looking for on YouTube, and lets you stream the audio to that. So um, that's great. So anything I want. I mean, every song I've ever looked for um, so far. So I'm in my car and I just have it connected up through Bluetooth and I'm literally, I'm not searching while I'm driving, but I can put together kind of a playlist before right. I leave. And then once you, you could save that song so that it keeps that link there. So you're not downloading the song to your, your phone. You're just you're playing not, it off YouTube. You're not taking up storage. That's great. It's just streaming. And, and you know, what's great about it is that you can find music that, that is older and music that, um, I, I like live music. I, if given the option, um, especially you know old like kind of rock and roll music, um, I like to be able to listen to those live performances, and they're all up on YouTube, right? So, so mm-hmm. this gives me the option to do that. Where you know sometimes in the iTunes that's store, great. No, that's a good suggestion. Uh, so yeah, there's a, there's an app yeah. I use all the time. Some of us do look for music all the time. So yeah, yeah. I, I mean, you know, my banking apps. Um, yeah. Anyway, so with that just, said, just curious, what kind of apps you thought were handy? Well, you don't see, they got, solve problems for me. That's right, because I got my faves too. So understanding behavior. There are sort of three levels of, of what I call complex complexity for app analytics. This is going to get a little geeky for a minute, but if you're going to launch a product, Thanks you need to warning. understand this. So level one of, of complexity for app analytics is what we call, um, it includes what we call DAUs and MAUs. Okay, so what does that mean in English? Yeah. Daily average uniques or unique you know, searches and monthly average uniques. 
And the third piece of level one is, is, of course, revenue. So you need to understand those three things. How many people are searching for your app a day, on a month, unique people, and then the revenue that you're driving out of that app. Number two, level two, is start to understand, now, what are my, my problems? Right. right. Do I have issues? Am I losing people as fast as they're coming in? How do I solve those retention issues? And level three is what drives growth. Okay. Because you need to understand what drives growth to be able to go from you know one user to a million users. Um, so you want to level you, you you measure your level one analytics. So, so metrics are measured again. This is kind of geeky, but but metrics are measured again in the DAUs and the MAUs. Um, you know, want to look at page views, revenue. This is a great start. But next, we understand how engaged the people are who are using your app. So so um, this is what's going to allow you to to track the events that give you a high level, a thirty thousand foot looking down. Uh, picture of user behavior. So for example, you want to understand if you're really, really serious about getting to people and to understand the mindset of the user of your app um, is the number of, of actions a user makes per day. How many times they're touching, t- tapping, squeezing, pinching. Like all of it, just any interaction? Right, at all? right number one, right. Um, what are the most common actions? Are there actions that you put in the app that people are missing? In other words, you thought you had a great idea for something, mm-hmm. but people aren't doing it, or a majority of people are. So how do you make them aware that there's this great thing they're not doing? Um, how and, do you? <clears throat> I'll tell you. And then from here, you can create actually different segments of users, break them up in, in, internally, and, and actually um, and manage them and analyze them based on their behavior. So you have active versus inactive users, for example, location, age, um, and you can glean how a- uh, users are actually physically interacting with your app. When you get to level three analytics, um, this is where you get to, to really understand what is drives... Is this where the level boss is, level three? What's that? Sorry, the video game reference. I, I'm not a gamer, <laughs> sorry. So, so in, in, in level three analytics... This is where you understand what really drives the growth to get you to the to the pinnacle in in your industry, so to say, and what behaviors correlate to lifetime value. I assure you, there are apps on your phone that you've had from like day one when you got that good old iPhone four. Yeah, when it was cool yeah. to have an iPhone four. <laughs> right. <laughs> I promised myself I wouldn't. I, I spent a lot of money on it then. I promised myself I wouldn't replace it until it didn't work anymore. So here's a great example. So Facebook, at, at one point, believe it or not, they were sort of stuck at 50 million users. Yeah. Yeah. So big deal, right? I know. No. But they put a team together. And I can't, just for time's sake, let me just say that this team took a long, long time to analyze their users. And ironically, what they figured out at the end is that. If a user added seven friends within their first 10 days, that led to an engaged user. And then Facebook basically created the next portion of their their growth mode uh, and all that they were doing to incorporate actions and interactions and things in their app to to drive people to get seven friends in that 10-day period. And that's what led Facebook, that little thing, Mm -hmm. which seems so simple now, but took over a year of analysis to understand is what drove them from 50 million to over a billion users. Um, here's a very cool thing. Um, I, I'm looking at the clock. I see where we're at. But, but there's this thing called a heat map, right? Heat maps um, actually analyze and understand um, your users' focus areas. It's a software that, that you can embed into the, uh, the app itself. And, and you can see exactly finger movements. Everything you can't, you don't know who or whatever. It's 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 anonymous, but you can start to create unbelievable reports. And and wow. uh, it's about, a little scary. Uh, yeah, it is really scary. Uh, but you can aggregate all your users' gestures to let you know exactly what they're doing and what they're not doing. You can watch recorded sessions of real people, sort of focus groups, try different designs uh, to see how users perform, the sign-up process, the review process, uh, in-app referrals, onboarding flow, how they sign up, split test everything to reduce risk before you do upgrades. Wow, I'm talking fast because my time yeah. is up. Thank you, everybody, for listening to CEO Manship today. I'm Steve Gordon. I'll be back next Monday and every Monday on SoFlow Television and SoFlowRadio.com. You're listening to SoFloRadio.com.